Okay, good evening, everyone, and welcome to another Meaningful Monday. Today is Receiving Prosperity. So just a quick um, overview for anyone who's listening to this for the first time, because there are a couple of people, as it's Easter Monday, who will listen to the recording as opposed to being on the live uh, webinar. So just Meaningful Monday is just really about creating awareness about the fact that we create our own results, our own life, our own life experience, our own happiness, joy, whatever it may be. And this is just really to give some tips or guidance or information just to help raise our awareness how to get more of that. So how to get more happiness in our life or more um, health or more success or tonight prosperity, whatever it may be. So the webinar is being recorded. <clears throat> if anyone has a problem with that, um, then you can just put your cameras off. <clears throat> but otherwise, this is to be shared on my Silver Method YouTube channel um, just for the benefit of others. I'm just trying to get a small screen here not to disturb the webinar. Okay, so to begin, when we talk about receiving prosperity tonight, I just want to go back to what we did last month because everything is kind of connected and if you go back in sequence to the Meaningful Mondays, they actually do follow a certain kind of sequence. Of course, they work absolutely fine putting them on their own, but I wanted to just touch on last time because last time we spoke about how to love yourself and this really plays a massive role in prosperity across all areas of our life, no matter what area that is. And I just wanted to quickly recap on those 10 steps. So the first one is about not criticizing yourself, just the awareness when we do not to do that. Um, you can use the cancel cancel technique, which I've spoken about, comes from the silver method. Or stop scaring yourself. That just means don't make mountains out of molehills. When something happens, your perspective is everything. So don't get more and more worried, more and more fear. And then we actually scare ourselves and it becomes a downward spiral. We create more negative things in our life. Also be gentle, kind, and patient. With ourselves, we tend to be the ones most hard on ourselves. Also learn to be kind to our minds. I'm talking about negative thinking, daily meditation, finding either music or nature or reading, something that's really healthy and beneficial for the mind and trying to do that every single day. The other one is to acknowledge your efforts. If you've done something well, don't try and hide it or be you know, overly humble. Praise yourself. Pat yourself on the back. Acknowledge what you've done. Also, loving yourself means supporting yourself. And supporting yourself means asking other people for help. This is a big thing about prosperity in tonight's lesson, even though it comes from last month. Asking for help, being able to look for support from other people, not just always depending on yourself is really important to learn to receive. Also, love your negatives. Everything that you think you're gonna start a sentence with, you don't like something or hate something, try to find the one thing in that that's beneficial, whatever it may be. Let's just say a person's trying to leave their current job and in your mind you think, I hate my job. Well then find the one thing that you do love about it. Maybe it's just the fact that it gives you a paycheck to pay your bills. If it's just that one thing, just focus on that and love the thing about that and try and find that with anything in your life, it just helps to shift from negative to positive because negative thoughts can never, never give us um, positive outcomes. Then also loving ourselves means we take care of our body, not only to do with exercise, but with what we eat, with how much sleep we get, how much rest, how much fun and recreation, all of that, sunshine. And then mirror work, that's just about looking in the mirror and saying affirmations that help us love ourselves. And the one that I keep coming back to, which I've used for a long time, is I love myself, I believe in myself, and I'm worthy and deserving of fulfilling all my desires. I love myself, I believe in myself, and I'm worthy and deserving of fulfilling all my desires. Try saying that into the mirror, looking into your own eyes every day, at least 20 times. It will really shift your self-image, your relationship with yourself, and this also leads into tonight's lesson about receiving prosperity, which I'll talk about a bit later. And then the other thing is don't wait, love yourself now. So I wanted to start on that and saying, if this is something that you need to get your head around more or to understand how this clicks together with receiving prosperity, then on my Silver Method YouTube channel, you'll find recordings of previous Meaningful Monday. So I really wanted to start with this thing about loving yourself is truly the center point around which everything in our life revolves. Everything. 
everything revolves around this one key point. And I know it's only one of many lessons of Meaningful Mondays, but loving yourself is probably the one thing out of all of them that we should not forget and keep reminding ourselves about because it's like the sun. All planets revolve around the sun. So loving yourself is like the sun. All results, experiences, and circumstances and events of your life revolve around the degree to which you love yourself or not love yourself, whichever one that may be. And then I love this quote. It's, it's really, really important. Worry about loving yourself instead of loving the idea of other people loving you. So your only concern is really to look for ways on how to love yourself more. And maybe go back to last month's lesson if you need some tips there. But when we have this idea about having other people love us, it means we're seeking approval. And as long as you go around life seeking approval, what you're saying is you don't actually accept and love yourself as you are because you need other people outside to keep approving of you. And while you stay concerned about what other people think of you, you are going to stay stuck in this gap of how much you love and accept yourself. So I'm here to say, forget about what other people think. Just get that out of your mind. Um, and only worry about loving yourself. If it takes an affirmation every day or using visualization, do that. But really, affirmations in the mirror is the strongest thing for your subconscious mind because you look in your own eyes, you see yourself saying, I love you. As crazy as this may sound, it really does work. And as crazy as it may seem, it's really the one thing I would urge everybody on the planet to do is to look in their own eyes in the mirror at least 20 times a day and tell yourself that you do love and believe in yourself. Because once you get used to that, if it seems uncomfortable in the beginning, it's even more reason that you do it. If you get comfortable with it, you know something's already shifted for you. Keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. Because the more you can love yourself, the more you honor yourself, the more everything else that you're looking for in your life will start to click into place. And tonight talking about prosperity, this is really quite a key point. So I wanted to start with that. Okay, so I just want to read this um, particular quote. There's a, some information I'll share tonight, and much comes from Louise Hay. I've been talking about Louise Hay through many Meaningful Mondays and Wayne Dyer as well. But Louise Hay is an inspiration to me for how she changed her life. And this is something that she says the power within us or the power within us is willing to give us our fondest dreams and enormous plenty instantaneously. So basically the power within us, I'm talking about you are connected to source energy. You are a physical extension of source energy. You can never separate yourself from source energy. And this is the power with the capital P I'm talking about. Source energy is in you. It's part of you and you're part of it. So whatever we want, our fondest dreams or plenty in terms of abundance is really available to us instantaneously. When we don't experience it in our lives, the problem is that we are the ones who are not open to receiving it. So receiving is a whole practice. It's a whole energy. It's a mindset. It's a state of emotion. It's a mood. Being open to receiving is a state of mind. It's not to do with anything else or how much we desire something or expect something to happen or want or need something. Receiving is something that is up to us. And I want to talk about this tonight because this is what's going to lead us into either getting or not getting what we want. Now, this is really important. When we get frightened, and I'm talking about we get frightened, fear, there's only two emotions. Love and fear. All positive emotions come from love. All negative emotions come from a sense of fear. So when we get frightened, naturally, as an instinctive thing or as a reaction, when we get frightened, when we experience fear, the first thing we want to do is control everything because we feel out of control when we're frightened. So when we want to control everything, this energy is stifling. Control is a stifling energy and it's kind of like a hose pipe. It shuts off the flow of anything good into our life. And it'll never help us to try to control things when we're afraid. 
We need to surrender. We need to trust. We need to have faith. Everything we need is here for us. We are either blocking the receiving of it or we're opening up that conduit to receiving. And trust, trusting life, having faith that everything unfolds as it, as it needs to unfold. Changes your energy completely into a place of acceptance. And we need to accept and love and be grateful for whatever's going on in our life, whatever's going on. And with that, everything that we need can flow in and bring us what it is that we're looking for. So I just wanted to mention this because when fear shows up, I just want to say every single negative emotion, bar none, every single negative emotion, if it's grief, if it's frustration, if it's anger, if it's jealousy, um, if it's being depressed, I think I said angry, whatever it may be, resentment, all of it stems from fear. So I just want you to know that when we are frightened, we do not even knowingly try to control things in our life to fix them. And that's not going to help us um, go forward and get what we want. Now, it's important when we talk about prosperity that we understand it's not just about money. Prosperity comes in many forms. I'll just roll them out here. Okay, so when you talk about time, if you were asked by someone, you know, what kind of time do you experience? You know, what's time like in your life? And, you, and if you answered something along the lines of, geez, man, I'm always rushed. Life is busy. I'm always on the go. I don't have much time for myself. Things are really hectic. If you're always feeling rushed, then what you need to be aware of is that you're experiencing a lack of time. I'm really mentioning this because it's important. If time is an issue for you, it affects money. It affects prosperity. It affects love. It affects success, comfort, all that this there. All of these hang together. All of them are interconnected. Nothing stands alone. So just remember when you're feeling rushed. One thing I started saying as an affirmation many years ago, when I was working in corporates, they retrenched some people and my workload like basically trebled overnight. And I was really busy. I was working <laughs> seven days a week, long hours. It wasn't serving me. I was getting exhausted. I wasn't getting enough rest. I felt the stress. My health was no good. I never had time to exercise. And I felt that lack of time. I started an affirmation which said, I have less work and more time. That's all. I have less work and more time. I have less work and more time. I just said it over and over and over, even though my life was hectic. But I said it consistently, like hundreds of times a day. And whenever I felt myself being too busy and short of time, I just would say, I have less work and more time. And you know that slowly but surely, without the volume of work changing, I found myself with more time. I would go for walks in the morning or walks in the evening. I'd find myself sitting sometimes just being able to relax. I'd find being able to take a full hour sometimes at lunch and enjoy a conversation with a friend. So I'm making you aware that if you're experiencing lack of time, change that belief. It's only a belief. As much as we think it's a fact, I've got a lot of things to do. It's fact. These things are on my list. I want to say to you, not really much in this world is a fact. Your reality is not factual. Your, your reality is perception. And if you could change a belief that you hold, you would change your perception and your perception of time would change. So I'm just making you aware. And I'm spending a lot of time on the first one because I'll go faster through the others. But everything and your relationship to everything, all all um, affects everything else. So time affects love, success, beauty. Everything affects everything. They are all connected like a big matrix. The next one is love. You know, how do you feel about love? Do you feel that you receive a lot of love? Do you get a lot of love from all the relationships in your life? Where do you feel a lack of love? Whatever it is there where you feel a lack of love, do what you need to do to change that. And if you can't really change that, then I'm going to ask you to accept it as it is and don't expend energy down an endless bottomless pit. And start off with, as I said, loving yourself. If you can learn to love yourself, you, I promise you now your relationships will automatically change. The more you love yourself, the more you'll find people love you back. And if you have a lot of lack of love in your life, there's a lot of lack of self-love going on. Everything is a reflection. 
Success. If you think success is beyond your reach, even the tiniest thought that success is beyond your reach, you'll never get it. That's it. It's what you believe about your ability to have success. So again, it's a belief. We need to do what it takes to change that belief. This is what we do in the silver method. We rewire neuro pathways in our brain. We rewire ourselves to change beliefs that serve us to get what we want. Um, how much comfort do you have in your life? Or even beauty. You know, there's beauty all around us. The question is, how much beauty do we notice? Or how often do we talk about things that look ugly or look dirty or look messy or pollution or whatever it is? Just be aware. Knowledge is another one. If we don't think that we know very much, if you have any idea about yourself that you lack knowledge, you disconnect yourself from the wisdom in this universe. And this wisdom, as funny as this may sound, exists. There's something called the one universal mind or the one mind or infinite intelligence. I'm sure you've heard these terms before. If you haven't, Google them and, and look them up. There is no proof that this is not true because people who've got no knowledge from studying or learning or hearing something have found that they've received wisdom, information or knowledge either through a dream, having a nap one day in their sleep or just something pops in their head or intuitively they guided. And where does this come from? This is infinite intelligence. This universe is all connected and all wisdom exists and we are connected to it. But if we don't think we have enough knowledge because we're not educated enough or we're not clever enough or anything of those thoughts, we literally shut ourselves off from receiving any form of wisdom from the universe. When it comes to relationships, I've spoken about that. All relationships, every relationship you have with every single person, if it's positive or, full, or very loving or not, is a sign on our relationship with ourselves. And if we have relationships that are difficult, challenging, or lack love or lack happiness, then we are affecting money in our life as well, prosperity, comfort, love, time, whatever it may be. When we talk about health, ask yourself in your life, how much of the time are you healthy? Perfect health compared to how often do you get sick? How often do you catch the common cold? How often do you complain about aches and pains? Health is a direct relationship again to the view we have of ourself and health. We can change our health as much as we believe that conditions are permanent or hereditary or whatever it may be. There's more proof today that it's not that at all. Books like I'm the placebo by Joe Dispenza, or actually it's called you are the placebo or the biology of belief is that all health comes from our beliefs. It's not from genealogy or genes or hereditary, anything. And even conditions like paralysis that we think are permanent can be reversed by changing our beliefs. So all of this is really all related. And we talk about prosperity with money. You can't just talk about money. You have to talk about prosperity in your whole life across all these different topics. And we need to really examine our lives across all of these and keep finding areas of improvement because the more we can shift those, Everything else benefits and everything else becomes more improved. I love this quote. It says, the strongest single factor in prosperity consciousness is self-esteem. That's self-love. Believing you can do it. Believing you deserve it. Believing you will get it. That's why that affirmation in the mirror that I spoke about where you say, I love myself. I believe in myself. There. Believing you can do it. I'm worthy and deserving. There it is. Believing you deserve it. I'm worthy and deserving of fulfilling all my desires. It's probably one of the most powerful affirmations we could use. Now, none of the above has anything to do with receiving. It's about allowing ourselves to accept. You know, people always think, oh, I want to get this. I want to get that. However, abundance and prosperity is about allowing ourselves to accept, allowing ourselves to receive. When we don't get what we want in life, it's because we don't allow ourselves to accept or to receive. We, we, we are not at that energy that we, something's blocking us, allowing it to flow into our life. For example, 
if we are stingy with life, life will be stingy with us. If we try and take, take, take from life, life will take from us. So this leads me to my next point, which is about receiving prosperity. The first thing I want to talk about in receiving prosperity is being honest with ourselves. Now, honest is a word that we all use a lot, but there's not always the understanding of the true significance and what it means to be honest. Now, when I talk about honest here, I'm not talking about morals. I'm not talking about, you know, sticking to the law or breaking the law, committing a crime, um, you know, going to jail, um, kind of that being honest or dishonest. It's not about getting caught doing something wrong. It's not about like if you did something bad, you're going to go to jail. I'm not talking about that in terms of honesty, no. When I talk about honesty here, I'm talking about honesty being an act of love for ourselves. I'll say that again. When I'm talking about honesty or being honest with ourselves, I'm talking about an act of love for ourselves. Are we honest with ourselves as to how we love ourselves? So I'm sure you've all heard the universal law of cause and effect. There are several universal laws, but they say this is the law of laws, the law of cause and effect. You know, everything, every cause has an effect and every effect creates another cause and whatever you do has an effect. Nothing stands alone. Everything that happens is this law of cause and effect. Whatever we do has an equal and opposite reaction. That's basically the law of cause and effect. So what I'm talking about, when we are being honest with ourselves, I'm saying, if we found ourselves being judged, are we honest with ourselves enough to say it's because we judge others? If we go around always angry inside, you're going to find, no matter how you try to work things, that you are going to find angry people in your life. By the same token, if we have love for ourselves, it keeps us in tune with love from other people or love from life that just keeps flowing towards us. The more we love ourselves, the more love flows towards us. The more angry or frustration we have, the more anger and frustration flows towards us. So this is really an important thing for us to learn as adults. And it takes years for some people. And it's really about taking responsibility, 100% responsibility for creating our own experience. And it's not something that many of us want to accept all the time. We're happy to accept it some of the time. And some of the time we say, yep, I'm responsible. But we're not always willing to say, I'm responsible all of the time. However, we do need to recognize that everything in our life comes from within us. So, you know, if we take we lose. If we give, we get. It's the law. It's the law. So I know this is going to sound crazy, but when someone gets robbed, and I come from South Africa, where crime is really high there, when someone gets robbed, a question that I often ask myself is, who did they steal from lately? And it doesn't have to be that they stole money. They could be honest when it comes to money or material things. They could be honest as, as the day is long. But maybe they stole something else. Maybe they stole I don't know, self-worth from someone. Maybe they belittled someone and actually stole their self-worth and humiliated them. Or maybe you stole time from someone. You just wasted someone's time. That's also the same thing as stealing. So as funny as it may sound, when someone gets robbed, I ask the question, who did you steal from lately? So when it comes to honesty, besides being down to the penny honest in any particular way in your life, what I'm saying is if, I'll just give you an example, if you're undercharged, at the grocery store or in a restaurant or something, we have a spiritual obligation to make that known. It's up to us to open up and bring that to whoever's attention. Keeping quiet about that, something inside you is keeping score there. And it's about honesty with yourself. And if we do it on this level, we affect it in every other level in our life as well. So first of all, yeah, be down to the penny honest. Um, and if there are many losses in your life or often things that seem to be going wrong, examine your life in which way are you taking without giving or wanting more without wanting to give anything, wanting to just receive without an exchange of giving back as well. 
Now, this is difficult. It takes a lot of self-awareness and it takes a huge amount of self-examination. And it's not something we naturally tend to sit and think about. So that's why I'm raising it here as something of self-awareness to think that if we do look at our lives, the law of cause and effect is playing out all the time. And whatever we experience, we need to examine what is the cause of that. So what I'm really saying is, if we change slides here, is that your reality is your feedback mechanism. Everything in your life is feedback. And it always comes down to your relationship with yourself. Now it says that you are magnificent and deserve the best. This is absolutely true. You are. You are absolutely magnificent, wonderful, perfect. The way you came here, we may be conditioned imperfectly or have beliefs that are not, not perfect or some behaviors that aren't, but our true being, our authentic self, the non-physical part of us is perfect. You are a magnificent being and you do deserve the best. If that sounds funny to you or doesn't sit well with you, doesn't resonate deep inside you, it means you're holding a limiting belief there. And whatever you believe is going to become your experience. So reality in our life shows us what our beliefs are on all those areas, you know, love, time, money, relationships, and where we need to do more work. This planet is an abundant planet. Abundant. There's no lack or limitation. And everything in our life starts with our thoughts. So what we need to do is we need to work or the work we do basically in our minds in consciousness is always refining what we think what we say what we do so when it comes to focusing on receiving prosperity the work we need to do is not outside ourselves it's inside ourselves working on our consciousness our thoughts and I'm talking about even things like practicing gratitude, which I'm going to talk about a bit later. Practicing abundance mindset. There's abundance everywhere. If you're not sure of that or you don't experience that or feel that, then think about sunshine. There's an abundance of sunshine. You can go and stand outside and take as much of that sunshine as you want. You're depriving no one. You can have perfect health. You're depriving no one of health. It's not to say if you have perfect health, other people are going to go without health. No way. So default setting, if we don't interfere with our natural default setting of perfect health with our emotions, we'll experience that. Or if you think about even grass or air, you can take a big breath of air. You're not depriving anyone. Look at the ocean. It's abundant. Beach sand. There are so much example. Nature, plants, whatever it may be. So have an abundance awareness even if it's every day in the shower that you can have a hot shower every day water just flows out the tap that's an abundance be grateful and aware and conscious of abundance in everything in your life and slowly but surely you start to tune in to that wavelength of abundance you know Wayne Dyer says abundance isn't something we get it's something we tune into and it's exactly that it's like a radio station you either tuned in or you're not. So if you don't experience it on a monetary level or in love, in relationships or in time, maybe you feel rushed and there's no time or in your health right now, then start to focus on abundance on anything else that you can. Start with sunshine, music, beach sand, whatever it may be. How many waves are there in the ocean? There's an abundance. So if losses and you know, bad experiences, if we say that they come from not being honest with ourselves or dishonesty, imagine what love and honesty can create for, your, for ourselves. Being really true and honest with ourselves and taking responsibility for anything that happens and finding the connection or that cause and effect relationship to help us improve. This life is about constantly improving, getting better and better. And we honestly can create anything with love, self-love. And more self-love we have, the more we love everything on the outside of us and honesty. So everything is a reflection of what you believe you deserve. I've just put four examples here, but it's everything. Let's just talk about a few of these. If, if you talk about your home, is it a reflection of what you believe you deserve? I mean, is home a place that you love? Is it comfortable? Is it joyous? Or is it cramped? Is it dirty? Is it messy? 
how is home in your mind or your car do you like your car do you love your car is it a reflection of the love you have for yourself does it reflect that way even your clothes when you think about clothes are they a nuisance to you are they a bother having to find something to wear to find clothes? or is it a reflection of how you feel about yourself that you loving having something new to wear or choosing something to wear it's a reflection of you how you love yourself how you express yourself when it comes to relationships as well every relationship is a reflection of what you believe you deserve so in your loving relationships that's because you have a belief that you deserve to be loved like that and that's wonderful cherish them give more into them invest more into them if you have relationships where you don't like the way you're being treated or you don't experience love or acceptance there then just know there's a part of you that doesn't love and accept you it's a reflection of your relationship with yourself and a re reflection of what you believe you deserve and you do deserve better you but you deserve everything that's wonderful in this life now this is why relationships are so important all relationships are very important because they reflect how we feel about ourselves so i just want to say this i've written here a little note if you believe that god or the universe loves and adores you and surrounds you with loving and supportive people that just bring good into your life and you really believe that and you think about that and you express gratitude for that and you just keep giving thanks that you believe that god or the universe is really going to just surround you and support you with loving people that will ultimately draw that to you. That will become your reality. You'll have more and more of those relationships showing up in your life. By the same token, the more we focus on relationships that make us grumpy and talk about them and talk about them and think about them and talk about them and talk about them some more, the more we are creating more of that momentum and bringing that into our life. And I just want to talk for a second about codependent relationships. And I'm sure you all know what that means. Codependent means you depend on each other. So in other words, I'm not whole alone. I need you. I need this person in my life to make me feel whole and complete. Alone, I feel incomplete. That's codependent. So there's a big, big difference between the need for love and being needy for love. Because needy for love has got this big energy of lack. Now, personal relationships is a priority for most of us. It really is. So we need to really look at our personal relationships and especially about our significant other and think into them, reflect into them and try to help us understand us, just us, our relationship with ourselves. Because if we can fix that, we will move out of codependent relationships into more unconditional loving relationships where we hold and complete without the other person. And then we receive more and better things into our life. So, if people are alone and don't have a partner right now, the mentality of, you know, hunting for love or trying to find that partner, I've got to get that right person, is not going to help them bring them into your life because what you want them for is quite unclear. You just want to have another person in your life. So if you ever thought that if I don't have someone in my life, my life is not very good. Or if I have someone in my life, my life will be better. That thought is one of I am incomplete. And it doesn't work that way. And it won't bring you the relationship that you want because your mind is that you are incomplete and you need this other person to complete you. We don't feel whole. We feel that someone else needs to maybe take care of us. We can't do it on our own. Why do we believe that we can't take care of ourselves? That's a limiting belief. No matter your circumstances, that's a limiting belief. And if you change that belief, you would change that circumstance. Also, maybe growing up in a dysfunctional family, believing, that, believing maybe that we need to, um, that we maybe not enough, and we need approval from other people and love from other people and pats on the back and um, praise to make us feel whole and complete or to feel better, to lift our self-esteem. That's also very unhealthy. Or if we're in a relationship, especially codependent relationships, we'll find that people are always telling the other person what to do. As long as you're always telling the other person what to do, it means that you're manipulating the relationship. 
You're trying to control the other person because if the conditions aren't exactly what the way you want them to be, you feel fear. You feel out of control. But control is not love. Control is a lack of love. It's, it's just fear. We want to control things when we, are, when we are fearful. So if we can contribute in our own lives to making ourselves feel fulfilled and trying to do that more and more, find the things that make you feel fulfilled. Practice them. When you do that, you'll find that you'll not be so needy and you'll not be so codependent and you won't need people as much. You'll be much happier. And with that energy, you're actually more attractive, way more attractive than a needy type of energy. And you're actually going to attract better people into your life that just love and accept you as you are, won't want to control you and want to pour into you. Also, the more we can practice the self-love and get out of codependent relationships, the more we're going to feel centered and calm and secure in our life. And when we are more centered and calm and secure, your relationships at work and your relationships at home will all become better and better. They'll all start to improve. So really, it comes back to self-love. The more we have self-love, the more we have self-respect. Um, the more we have self-respect, everything becomes easy in our life because we start to really have a knowing for what's right for us. We start to have a knowing for what we, for what we need to make ourselves feel fulfilled and we actually take action in that area and keep reinforcing through behavior that we do love and care for ourselves. And the more we practice that, the more we raise that belief and self-worth and self-esteem. So we never spend our time looking for love outside. It's always inside. So there's that saying, you know, looking for, the, looking for love in all the wrong places. Looking for love in all the wrong places means you're looking for love anywhere that's outside of you is looking for love in the wrong place. So your, your relationships definitely reflect your relationship with yourself. Okay, so when it comes to prosperity, I'm sure all of you are wondering what about the money? You didn't talk about the money. Well, let's talk about beliefs about money. I'm going to say this. If you're making notes about receiving prosperity, just write two things down. The first one is everything starts with loving yourself. And I've spoken about that up to now. Tick. The next thing is money is a mindset. It's not this paper stuff that gets exchanged and you earn it and you work and if you work hard or get a good job, or you get out of it. No, no, no. Money is a mindset. I know this sounds weird, but it's a mindset. Whatever you believe and hold in your mind, any thought about money is going to be your experience. So people who have wealth have a different mindset to people who don't have wealth. People who always struggle have a different mindset about money, their beliefs about money, to people who never worry about money. They just never do. So when it comes to beliefs about money, where do these beliefs come from? Well, fear about money issues come from our childhood programming. Your parents' beliefs, your parents' behaviors around money, or their behaviors around the lack of money, You've adopted those beliefs. And then through your life, you've created more beliefs of your own, whatever circumstances you may have been in. But most of them, deep-rooted, deep-seated beliefs about money come from our childhood programming. Here are some beliefs about money. If, if you ever catch yourself or someone that you know thinking thoughts like, you know, if I don't have this job that I've got right now, well, I may never find work. That's a limiting belief. That's not at all true. Or thinking that the job that you have, you really need it because you may never find work. No. Or maybe if I don't have this job or I don't stay in this, whatever, I may lose my home or I may lose my car, whatever it may be. That's a belief you hold. None of this is true. None of this is a fact. It's only a belief, it's perception. Or some people have a belief that it takes hard work. Some people believe it takes luck. You know, you've landed with your behind in the butter or we got a lucky break or he had rich parents who gave, who gave him a good start in life. Or gee, 
he knew the right person at the right time and it was about who you know, not what you know. So he got, you know, this lucky opportunity. And that's why this person's successful or rich. That's not at all true. It's got less than nothing to do with hard work. Please trust me on this. There are some people who work bloody hard. They're not wealthy. You get some very wealthy people that don't work that hard. They play hard, they work hard, they have a wonderful life, they take plentiful holidays. They have abundance, not handouts, from their own earning. It's all beliefs. It's all a mindset. So if you would like more prosperity, besides what we've discussed about all areas of our life, the thing that you need to do to get started, which I've done in my own life, if I tell you where I started and where I've come, <laughs> We need another week to talk about that. But if I can just say in brief, I very first started earning the minimum wage in South Africa. The minimum wage. I earned so little, I couldn't afford car insurance. So if I wanted to get a car, I'd have to not insure it. That wouldn't be clever. And um, I knew my limitations. And I struggled for years, working very, very hard. Really giving it my all, blood, sweat and tears. Nothing really shifted from a money point of view until I started hearing more talks, more seminars, more videos, more movies, more books, educating myself about money. And I realized it's a mindset. And then I started to work actively on changing my mindset. And my results changed and prosperity changed. And I now hold different beliefs and I hold beliefs that serve me years ago. Many years ago, I'm talking about more than 30 years ago, I heard someone say, um, I never worry about money. I always have it. For somehow, I've always had money. And I thought, shit, that's a good belief to have. Because if you believe that, you'll experience that. And I made a point of saying that. I never worry about money. I always have enough. And I'm not joking. Since that day to now, it's been my experience. Yes, sometimes, of course, I'm going to worry about money for something that's going on. But in general, it's a good belief to hold. I've just put two here, which you could perhaps want to use yourself. The first one is deserve. It comes back to that self-love. I deserve to have money and riches, and I use money wisely. Why is it important to say we use money wisely? Because if we don't have a lot of self-worth, no matter how much money you get given, you're going to divest yourself of that money. I don't care if you win the lottery. I don't care if you get $5 million overnight cash in your hands. If you don't change your money mindset, you will divest yourself of 95% of that money in the next five years, guaranteed. This is proven. There's statistics on this, scientific evidence on this. Apparently 95 or more percent of all lottery winners divest themselves of all that money in five years or less. Why? Because they haven't changed their mindset. Whatever you believe you're gonna experience. So I'm here to say to you, Make an effort to change your beliefs about money. And here are some affirmations. I deserve to have money and riches and I use money wisely. Program that. If you're from the silver method, take this into an image and use the mirror of the mind. If you're not a silver graduate and haven't done the silver method, maybe consider doing the program, but otherwise get a scene in your mind on this statement and visualize this. See yourself living this. See yourself feeling deserving to have a lot of money regularly and that you use it wisely and you invest it and you get dividends and it grows and you park it there and that grows and you're investing in things that grow your money. Here's another affirmation. I trust I will always be taken care of and always have been. This is beautiful. This is so beautiful. This is about faith. This is about putting your life in God's hands, or whatever God is for you. Source energy, infinite intelligence, the universe. You're putting your life in an energy and a power that's unlimited, that's omnipotent. And you're saying to this infinite power, I trust, I trust with all faith, with all my heart and all my soul and all my mind and all my strength that I will always be taken care of. It's a belief you hold. And you say that I always have been. Just think about yourself from 
in conception to nine months, you were taken care of. You required nothing from outside. Your mother just lived her normal life as best you could, and everything you needed was taken care of. So why would that ever change? Then I'm here to also add, when it comes to prosperity and money, that money isn't always the answer. If you're watching this lesson because you believe that you could do with more money and that if you had more money, it would solve a lot of your problems, I'm here to tell you that that may not necessarily be true for you. I'm sorry to give you the bad news. But many of us think that if we have a lot of money, that everything is going to be fine. You know, we won't have any more of these worries. We won't have any more of these problems. But money is truly not the answer. It's just a consequence. It's a result. Some people have all the money they would ever need in their lives, but they still aren't happy. You need to think about these people. You need to think about this. They have all the money and they're still not happy. I heard someone say once, Money can never fill a hole in your heart. When I heard this man say that, I remember I was working for corporate at the time. I wasn't earning bad money. I was quite happy with the money that I was earning. I had investment properties. They were also making me good money. And I, from a money point of view, I felt okay. You know, I felt in a good place. But I did have a hole in my heart. I was in a very unfulfill, unfulfilling job. I was living from a Monday to a Friday, serving someone else's agenda. There was nothing fulfilling for me in that. I enjoyed it for many years, but there came a point where it wasn't fulfilling anymore. I didn't feel any sense of purpose. My life never had much meaning. And when this man said, money will never fill a hole in your heart, I realized I could stay in this dead-end job. I could earn all the money. I could earn a million dollars an hour. I would be unfulfilled. Life would be miserable. What's the point? Money is not always the answer. We need to go back to the very first slide I started on tonight, which is last month's lesson about loving yourself. You've got to go back to being fulfilled and happy now. And if you're not, the answer is in that lesson. Work there. Go back to the drawing board. Start on step one. Work there. Fulfill yourself from the very beginning. Start filling the cup if it's empty and only work on yourself. Use the affirmation that you do in the mirror. As you start to fill this cup and you start to get filled up inside through self-love, appreciation, self-worth, self-esteem, the cup will become full and you'll flow out. And when you have this feeling inside you that you love and accept yourself as you are, the rest of your life works that way. And you will be deserving. And when you're deserving, you change your belief about what you believe you deserve to receive. It affects time, love, health, relationships, success, everything, and money. So we do first need to do the inner work. We do first need to love ourselves. And creating our own happiness is our job. We've got to take 100% responsibility for creating our own, own happiness. It doesn't lie outside of us at all. And if you think there's anyone in your life that's standing in the way of your happiness, think again, my friends. That's a, a belief that you hold. It's not true. Nothing and no one can stand in the way of your happiness. It's up to you. You can choose to be unconditionally happy, believe it or not. If you just said, from today on, I choose to be unconditionally happy no matter what, you will be. If you read the book, A Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl, about this man in the Second World War in a concentration camp, I'm not going to tell you he was happy. He had a terrible experience in the concentration camp. It's really horrendous. But he did say, no one's going to control my thoughts. It's the one place I have power. And it's through reading this book, you understand how he got through this and he wrote this book as a result of it, and he understood that the thoughts we hold and the purpose we have for our own lives determines whether we survive and thrive or whether we just give in and die. So improve your relationships, create your own happiness, love yourself, change or remove codependent relationships. They're not good for you. 
change them, get rid of them, alter them, improve them, but just change codependent relationships, they sap you. The minute you have a codependent relationship, it means this is you and this half is someone else and this half is you. And if that thing's not there, you're only half. This is exhausting. It saps your energy. Okay, so how to receive prosperity? And I am specifically talking about money. These you already probably know, some of them. Be grateful. We know about gratitude. Focus on what we have. If we focus on what we have and what we're grateful for, count all your blessings. The more we focus on that, the more we attract it into our life. The more we focus on what we don't have, I mean, you can go on forever. You can choose what you think. You can choose to focus on all that you have, or you can choose to focus on all that you don't have. It's up to you. So I'm going to suggest, focus on what you do have. And just express endless gratitude. Have a gratitude journal. Express gratitude every single day or night of your life. Because the more you do that, the more you attract that into your life. I love this saying. It says, he who thanks for little will not thank for much. He who thanks for, li for little will not thank for much. If we're not grateful for what we already have, I'm so sorry to tell you, it's going to be almost impossible for you to receive anymore. Because it's the energy of being grateful for receiving that brings more of that into your life. Learn to receive. Learn to receive with thanks. You know, we are maybe conditioned somehow to feel compelled to reciprocate. Someone buys me lunch, I feel I have to buy them lunch. Someone buys me a present, I think I need to buy them a present. We have this urge to reciprocate. I'm here to say to you, try to just train yourself just to receive with thanks. Just learn to receive with thanks without having this compelling urge inside you to reciprocate. Try to just take that in with thanks and feel the openness of your heart to receiving. We need to learn to accept graciously and comfortably. And the reason we need to do this is because the universe will perceive your perception of receiving. If you keep having an energy about you, when you receive, you have to give something back. When you receive, you have to give something back. The universe perceives this, and this creates what you have. It's not about exchanging prosperity all the time. Give, get, give, get. Learn to receive and just give thanks and absorb the receiving, even with help. Ask for help. Why do you believe that you're not worthy of asking for help? Not being able to ask for help affects your money prosperity in your life. As weird as that sounds, you might think it's not connected. It's so connected. If we can't ask for help, it means we don't feel that we deserve it. We're putting someone out. We feel we're being an inconvenience. Why would you feel you're an inconvenience unless you think that you're not deserving of it? So, much of our problems in our life stems from our inability to receive. Most of us find it very easy to give. Very easy. We can give easily, but we don't find it easy to receive. Learning to receive is actually training your vibration up to an upward place of receiving. And as you train that vibration to an upward place, you elevate the ceiling on what you receive. And if you want to receive more money, there's a limit. There's a ceiling on it. You need to push that ceiling up and up and up. And the way you do that is to actually train your vibration or train your mind, your mentality, your set point on receiving. The next thing I'll talk about is tithing. I don't know what your thoughts are on tithing. I've got a whole lesson on tithing that I do in a program of mine called the Empowerment Mentoring. And tithing is a universal principle. You've all heard about tithing from the Bible, I'm sure. Maybe some of you think it's rubbish. Some of you, may, some of you think it's wonderful, whatever it may be. Whether you believe in it or not, it's a universal principle. This means it doesn't require your belief to work. It just is. It's a law. Now, um, in the Bible, it says, you know, you tithe 10%. 
It's one of the oldest principles around. If any of you want to know about money and creating wealth in your life from start to finish, regardless of how much money you earn, you will end your life very wealthy. I said, I said again, regardless of what you earn, read a book called The Richest Man in Babylon. It's a story. It's like a fable. But the principles of wealth and money are all in this, in this book. And the one principle is giving away 10% of every dollar you earn. Every dollar you earn, give away 10%. This is a very, very tough principle to follow. And I speak from experience here. I heard about tithing many, many years ago, and I had to practice it on and off, on and off, kind of when it suited me. When I didn't think I had enough money, I wouldn't give. And when I felt that I had a lot of money, I would give. Until a mentor came into my life, and I started really understanding abundance and money mindset. And he said to me, you have to tithe. If you want to become wealthy, you have to commit to yourself that you're going to tithe every single time you earn a single cent, whatever it is. And 10% is just a little bit much. Try it. It's just, I mean, 6% or 5% is, is comfortable. 6 is, okay, 7, but 10. 10 is just stretching the envelope. It's just, it seems like a little too much. Well, I'm telling you, give 10% away and watch how abundance flows into your life. You see, when we give through tithing, what we're saying energetically is I have more than I need. I can give some away to benefit others. I trust that more will come my way. I trust that more will come my way. That's why I can give the 10% away. Thank you that I may give because I know. I trust, I have faith that I will receive. This is not the last I'm ever going to receive. More is going to come so I can give some away. All of this is an energetic expression from yourself to the universe and everything you experience is a vibrational match. So as long as you're sending out that signal, I have more than enough, I can give away, you'll experience a vibrational match and you'll have more than enough. If it's not just money that you can give, then... Think of other things you can do. You can give your time. You can volunteer. It doesn't always have to be money. But money is a tough one because it's measurable. And it is something that you can always monitor. So if you gave away 10%, you could see how money flows to you and what's actually going on in your life. You know, um, in the Silver Method, Laura Silver was talking on an audio program that I have about her daughter who called her the one time from New York where she tried to move to to get a job. And she said, Mom, I'm on the, I'm on like, I'm in dire straits. I don't have much money. I've got $100 in my bank account, in my purse, and that's all I have. I've got no more. I don't know if I'm going to be able to pay rent. And she used to do dancing gigs. So she never got a gig. She never earned money. So Laura Silver said to her, you got $100 in your purse? She said, yes. Go and give away 10%. Go give away $10 right now. She goes, but mom, I can't even. She said, just trust me. Just do what I say. Go out tonight and give $10 to someone who needs it more than you do. Someone on the street, go do it. And, you know, she resisted a bit and eventually her mother convinced her. And she went out and did that. She gave away $10. The very next day, she got three speaking gigs. Now, I know this sounds like, oh, wow, that's just a story. This is how it is. Try this and watch money and abundance flow into your life. It really does work. You know, people often say, I'll tithe, I'll tithe when I have the money. Of course, they never do. They never tithe. And they also never have enough money in their mind. So if you want more money, start right now. I challenge you, start tithing right now and watch the blessings flow your way. Whenever you feel that you're short of money, just go to your bank or your purse and see what's in there. Just take 10% and donate it straight away. As hard as it is, just go and do that and do it with the right heart. You know, and I talk about the right heart. This is really important. If you tithe to get more, like, oh, this is a strategy. I'm going to tithe so that I can just get more. Okay, then you've missed the point. That doesn't work either because it must be given freely and it must be given from your heart and it must be given from a place of abundance mindset and a trust and a faith that you will get more. Otherwise, it doesn't work. The universe responds to your vibration. Not to your goal. If your goal is to tithe to get money, the universe is not going to respond to the goal. It's going to respond to your vibration. Your vibration is, this is a strategy because I'm in such lack. I've got to do this to get that. You are staying in a place of lack. 
Give from your heart, give freely. Thank you that I've got so much I can give. So that's really important too. Have the right energy about you and the right emotion about you and gratitude about you in tithing. Um, and also remember that let money flow through you, not just to you. There's a saying, you know, don't become a reservoir. Be a river where money can actually flow, flow through you and benefit others. So give to people less fortunate than you when you tie them. Help others who need it more than you do. There's 80% of the world needs it more than you do. Trust me, they don't even have three meals a day, let alone sleep in a house. So if you let money flow through you, you keep it like a currency. It's called a currency. Money is a currency, like a current. It flows. If you stop and every money you get, you want to hold on to it and never give anything away. A reservoir becomes a toxic place. It's not a clean, pure water. It's quite toxic in that kind of environment. And lastly, love yourself. We're coming back to the first principle which we've spoken about already. So that's really the lesson for tonight. Here's just a, a couple of affirmations, or this one that I particularly like, from Louise Hay. And, I and I'd urge you to use it. She says, I am unlimited in my wealth. All areas of my life are abundant and fulfilling. I want you to always think about prosperity and wealth in all areas of your life, not just about money. And then when you have a problem with money, start looking at your relationships, your love, your success, your time, your health, all those areas to find a pattern in there and create affirmations that help you change your relationship and your beliefs about money. I just want to tell you that um, Bob Proctor years ago in an audio book that I have, said, how many sources of income do you have? And I thought all the time I only had one. I was, you know, working in a paid job. And he said, just, just have an intention to have 15 sources of income. Draw a pie chart right now, like, and split it up into 15 and just write where you get your money from and just focus on that. Just keep it in your mind. Just put it on your pin board. 15 sources of income. Do you know when I started doing that, I realized in my life I've got more and more sources of income. I've just made a list here tonight and I have approximately 12 or 13 sources of income, all kinds of things, you know, um, whether it's dividends from shares or um, I do earn money if I sell investment properties, one other business that I have. If I do personal development training, that's money. If I decide to coach people, that's money. Rental income from investment properties is also, if I sell anything, whatever, merchandise or books, whatever, it's a source of income. It might not be big. It doesn't matter how big or small it is. It's the fact that you're training your mind to focus on more sources of income. I don't mind if it's a dollar from a different source. You're starting to change your money mindset. Your awareness of multiple sources of income is changing. Even if it's that you're thinking about interest in the bank is a source of income. Save money, earn interest. That's another source of income. Okay. So to sum up, Let's go back to what we started with. Be honest with yourself. Everything is feedback. When you look at your life, understand, oh, that's a spelling error. The law, not the law, the law of cause and effect. Everything in your life is a reflection of what you believe you deserve. So if you talk about anything, your home, your car, your relationships, your work, do you love it, do you not love it, how much pay you have, it's a reflection of what you believe you deserve. Codependent relationships. Change them, get rid of them, move away from them, somehow transform them, whatever you need to do. But become aware if you're in a relationship where you feel as codependent. If you don't know much about this, watch YouTube videos or Google this. Because it's important that we know what is a codependent relationship and what isn't a codependent relationship because it saps you. And this being needy, you need someone else. Without them, you feel half of what you are. Also, your beliefs about money. Start changing them. Create new ones that serve you. Um, an example is money comes to me in increasing quantities from multiple sources on a continuous basis. I got that from Bob Proctor. I've repeated that thousands of times in my life. And whenever I get worried about money, that's the first affirmation that I bring to mind. And I just said over and over again until I alleviate that fear. Money comes to me in increasing quantities from multiple sources on a continuous basis. So if, you're writing, if you're writing that down, it'll be good. Money comes to me in increasing quantities from multiple sources on a continuous basis. 
Make that a belief. If you repeat that affirmation long enough, you can change your belief. Create an image of that. Visualize it. Put it in the mirror of the mind. Also remembering that money isn't always the answer. It isn't. It doesn't fix everything. If you're unhappy, you need to change that first and everything else will work out. If you're not having enough love, change that first. Self-love and everything else will follow. Money is a reflection of what's going on inside of ourselves. And then lastly, receiving prosperity. We spoke about being grateful and to receive with thanks. Just be thankful and be able to receive. Train that receiving vibration to an upward place. Tithing, I urge you to tithe. You're not only doing wonderful things for communities or people less fortunate than you, but you're also treat, teaching yourself to have faith, have trust in source energy that you will always be taken care of. And oh my goodness, you will. And the more you give, the more you get. The more you give, the more you get. Just have the right heart when doing so. And last but not least, we've spoken a lot about it. Love yourself. So I want to know if anyone has any questions at this point in time before I move on. If you do, you can unmute your microphone if it's muted and just say anything or add. Anybody want to add anything? I might have left something out that might be important for people to learn. Please feel free. No? Yes? No. Okay. I'll move on then. Um, okay. So now we're going to do a quick meditation just to reset our body and mind for the month. Think about what you want to focus on for the month of April. What we're going to do now is we're going to tune in to your higher self, a part of you that is all truth, that knows all truth, that understands all truth, and that gives you the highest wisdom for your life and for yourself that you can't get from anybody outside of you. So what I'd like you to do is quickly get a pen and paper, sit in a comfortable position. I'm going to try a different thing with the music because I realized on the recording, if I play the music through the computer like I did last time, um, it goes loud and soft. So I'm going to actually play it next to the PC and hope this works a bit better. Um, you can tell me at the end if it does or doesn't. Otherwise, let's begin. So I'm going to put my music on. Oops. So make sure you have a pen and paper ready to write. Sit in a comfortable position with it on your lap. At the end of the meditation, I'll ask you some questions. Just write down the first thing that comes to mind without judging anything, without thinking too much. Whatever comes, you write that down. it will be your truth. And when you finish writing, just take a breath and then just return to your center. In other words, return to your calm, peaceful, centered state. If you get answers, great. If you don't, great. There's no right or wrong. The purpose here is just to relax. The goal is to relax your body, relax your mind, and then to connect to your inner wisdom. I put the video off for a minute for this time. So just take a nice deep breath and as you exhale, just begin to feel your body relaxing. Take another deep belly breath and as you exhale, allow the tensions in your body to release and float away. Take another deep breath and as you exhale, feel the tension leaving your scalp. Relax your forehead. Relax your eyes and the tissues surrounding your eyes.
Relax your cheeks, your whole face. Relax your tongue and jaw. Take another deep breath. And as you exhale, relax your neck, your shoulders, arms, and hands. Take another deep breath. And as you exhale, feel the tension leaving your back all the way down your spine. Relax your chest. Relax your stomach. Relax your pelvic area. Take another deep breath and allow the tension to leave your hips and thighs as you exhale. Relax your thighs. Relax your knees. Relax your calves. Relax your feet. Relax your toes. Take another deep breath. And as you exhale, relax your body completely. You are now experiencing a deep state of relaxation. It's a wonderful feeling to be deeply relaxed. Continue to breathe deeply, slowly and rhythmically. You're now going to create in your mind an ideal place of relaxation. It can be real or imagined, somewhere that you've been or somewhere that you'd like to go. Just allow it to be a place where you feel totally and completely relaxed. Begin to experience that place right now. Now that you have created your ideal place of relaxation, you're going to add a waterfall of white light into the scene. Place it wherever you choose. The waterfall is gentle, allowing you to stand under the cascading white light. This light is a healing in it a healing energy, a clearing energy. Your waterfall of white light is now created. Walk over now to the waterfall and stand under the white healing light. Allow the white light to swirl around you, encompassing you within its glow.
Feel how soothing it feels. This white light is clearing the stress, tension, and clutter of the day. As it pours over you, feel it clearing the stress, tension, and clutter of the past week. of the past month, of the past year. Feel it clearing the stress, tension and clutter of the lifetime from your energy field or from your atmosphere or your aura. As this light clears your energy field, just notice how much happier you look. Feel how much happier you feel, how much lighter. Notice the smile on your face. See how the weights that you've been carrying are no longer a burden. Notice how your energy field is expanding out as you are radiating love. See yourself radiating love. This waterfall of light is always available to you whenever you need it. All you need to do is close your eyes and imagine your ideal place of relaxation and immerse yourself in this healing white light anytime, anywhere. Now take a deep breath, relax even deeper and repeat these beneficial statements to yourself mentally. Every day, in every way, I am getting better, better and better. Positive thoughts, suggestions and images bring me benefits and advantages I desire. I will always maintain a perfectly healthy body, mind and immune system. The following statements are for your better health. Keep in mind that from now on, I will occasionally be speaking in your place. Every second, every minute, every hour, every day, Every cell, tissue, organ, and system of my body is revitalized, restored, and renewed, resulting in a perfectly healthy body, mind, and immune system. I'm able to function in harmony physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually to promote maximum benefits. My awareness in using my mind allows me to do activities that promote increased health physically, mentally, emotionally and spiritually. Now imagine the white light turns to green. You are now immersed in a glowing green light. This green light is unconditional love. It surrounds you. It encompasses you. It flows through your entire being. It fills you with love. All those hurts you felt, 
all the pains you felt or the angry moments, allow this green light, this unconditional love to heal those spaces now. You are an amazing human being. You deserve love. You deserve joy. You deserve abundance. You deserve prosperity and wealth. And you deserve peace. It is now time to step out of the waterfall. Step out of the waterfall of light. Your energy field is now clean and clear. You are centered and energized. You are able to think more clearly, focus more easily. You are in the flow, the flow of universal love and energy. Take a moment to bask in this feeling of connectedness. You have now reset your body and mind for the month. It is now time to set your intention for the month of April. Tune into your inner wisdom, your higher self, that part of you that if you tuned in, guides you and intuitively knows what is best for you. Feel the alignment with your higher self. Feel that connection. Count yourself down from 10 to 1 and tell yourself mentally that you're tuning in to your higher self. I'll guide you. 10, 9, 8. Feel yourself tuning in to your higher self. 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, one. You are now tuned in to your higher self, that part of you that intuitively knows what is best for you. Whilst feeling this alignment, feeling the connection, ask yourself the following question and whatever comes to mind, just write it down. What do I need to focus on for the month of April? What do I need to focus on for the month of April? Write down whatever comes to mind and then just take a deep breath and close your eyes and re-enter your meditation. Now for the next question. What steps do I need to take to take me closer to what I want to be, do or have? What steps do I need to take to take me closer to what I want to be, do or have?
Take a deep breath and relax. Now for the next question. What do I need to let go of? Whatever comes to mind, write it down. What do I need to let go of? If anything else comes to mind, write it down. Lastly, ask yourself, is there anything else I need to know? Is there anything else I need to know? Or do? Then allow a deep breath, and as you exhale, just relax. Slowly bring your attention back to your body. Gently wiggle your fingers and toes. And when you're ready, you can count yourself out, one, two, three, and then open your eyes and have a big stretch. Blessings to all of you. I trust you all back and awake. Anybody want to share anything from the meditation? Please share. Did you get anything helpful? Anyone? Yes, no? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Ah, yes. Okay. I've um, been surprised um, with some of the answers. Um, what was the first question? I've got the answer, but then not the question. What do I need to focus on for the month of April? Ah, yes. I've put be feminine. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Definitely. Yeah, I don't know why. Um, and um, in the anything else I need to know or do, I need to take time for myself. Very good. So I guess that's that's a nice program when in the you know, big picture or the the phase in which I am is I I want to move out of working in the business with my husband. I want to apply for jobs and all of that. So, um, yeah, that came up with steps, the question two. But I think mm. it's more something conscious than really the higher self um, talking there. Well, it's interesting you mentioned um, the first thing about being feminine because I'm reading a book called Rise, Sister, Rise and I read um, a couple of chapters over this Easter weekend. And, you know, we often, as women in a male, sometimes in a man's world, depending on what industry you're in, we think to compete, we need to be tough, assertive and adopt qualities of the masculine to get ahead. But actually... It's all about being more of the feminine energy 
which is really what is needed and that actually is often um, more powerful and more strong and more attractive and more influential and more persuasive. So maybe think about that when you're going into your interviews is don't try and be assertive and strong if you think that's a quality that men respect if they are in the scene there, but being more feminine because the feminine qualities basically nurture the whole planet. They nurture yeah. and families, children and, you know, so just to share that. Mm. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Don't know if you want to share anything, Nancy. You're on mute though. I'm going to assume if you don't talk and interrupt me, that you don't want to say anything. So if you do, just talk and interrupt me. Okay, so just uh, moving on, I'm aware of the time. So next Meaningful Monday is on the 7th of May, and it'll be about expressing your creativity. Really interesting lesson about ourselves, because we are all very creative, but many of us perhaps don't express that all the time in all areas of our life. It's not just about art or music <clears throat> or things like that. And then, um, so the two people who are on the webinar, Nancy, um, Blandine and Martin also were at Out of This World, the four-day retreat. Oh, the date's there. Hold on. Let me so, just this. Is uh, it? Oh, yeah. It's a different, yeah, 19th of May. Okay. So it's now, so we have a one-day retreat at the same venue in Manly. Um, for those of you not aware, just go and Google online or go to Eventbrite or my Silver Method page. If you want to know more about that, the, the four-day retreat was amazing. It was really wonderful. Mm -hmm. So if you want to say anything, Blondine or Nancy, please go ahead and tell people listening to this any of your thoughts and why you think if they should come to the one day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What was your experience? Or just in a nutshell, if you think it was worth it or it was different or out of this world for you. So. That's the one day retreat. Um, you want to say something, Blondine? No. No? Okay. And then the Silver Method Life Training. There's two classes coming up in April. One for adults, the 12th to the 15th of April. And then there's also Silver Kids, which is a program for 8 to 12 year olds on the 19th to 21st of April. So for anyone who's interested in sending their kids, it is a prerequisite that at least one parent is a Silver Grad. So the opportunity to become a Silver Grad is that. Um, week before on the 12th to the 15th that's really it from my side um i don't think there's anything from anyone else want to just say anything before we um log off for tonight no all good for me thank you thank, thank you, you for, uh, okay i'll just inspirational talk thank you i'll just stop the recording